Let me start with this disclaimer. I purchased this camera without any discount and in no way was paid to do this review. With that out of the way, this review was very difficult to make for a few reasons. The first was research. The GH5 is hands down the most advanced camera in its price range and for its size. You simply won't find another camera that comes close to the feature set and depth of the GH5 at its price. It took me until now to fully and thoroughly test and use and understand everything there is to know about this camera. For those interested, I've put all of that information into a guide that you can purchase, stream, or download via the link in the description. The second reason this review was difficult to make is this. For $2,000, there's almost nothing to dislike about the GH5. Sure, the sensor could be bigger, the autofocus could be better, but if you keep in mind all the features that this camera has, and the fact that it's a Micro Four Thirds sensor, and that it costs only $2,000, you really can't complain. So doing a typical pros and cons video doesn't make a ton of sense here. What I'm going to do instead is talk about what this camera is great at and the three reasons I think you might want to avoid it. The first item up for discussion is image robustness. Compared to current offerings from Sony and Canon, the GH5's video or footage quality is astounding. In the resolution department, you can shoot up to almost 5K on the GH5 in addition to the standard 4K UHD, Cinema 4K, and HD. The anamorphic modes allow you to capture a 4.3 open gate image with a resolution of 4292 by 3744. Using a 2X anamorphic lens, you can technically achieve a 10K image of 9984 by 3744, which is just crazy. I've also enjoyed using round or spherical lenses to shoot video in anamorphic mode. This gives you a four by three square-ish video that you can crop and post, reframe, pan and scan, animate rotations, and more, all without losing resolution when distributing to 4K. Next up, we have frame rates, which is also groundbreaking here. We can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K and up to 180 frames per second in HD, making this one of the best cameras for high quality slow motion. And of course, all of this makes Canon's 60 frames per second at 1080 look pretty sad. As if resolution and frame rates weren't good enough, this camera can shoot 10-bit 422 with a bit rate of up to 400 megabits per second. For jaw-dropping quality, you can shoot at Cinema 4K 10-bit 422 at 400 megabits per second, all on a $2,000 camera body, which just blows my mind. Next up, we have Log and HDR. The GH5 is really the first low-budget camera that fully embraces HDR and powerful log filming. Using Vlog L or the built-in HDR support, you can capture HDR-ready content in camera or through something like the amazing Atomos Inferno recorders. I've had mediocre experiences with Vlog on my GH4, but with the new 10-bit 422, features on the GH5, log footage is now incredible. Another thing to note is that LUT implementation is great on this camera, making it really easy to monitor your log footage. And next up we have stabilization. Panasonic stabilization on the GH5 is wildly good, and so far the best stabilization I've worked with on a camera. To give you an idea of how good it is, here are just some simple tests of using the camera with and without stabilization. There are several flavors of stabilization. You can mix and match different settings and it's pretty awesome what you can achieve here. The next thing I love about the GH5 is that it is a compact camera system. With most smaller mirrorless or DSLR cameras, you need to add a couple things to the system to really get the best out of it when it comes to image quality and sound quality. But with the GH5, you can rig things up very, very simply. For example, a great setup is the GH5, the Panasonic audio adapter, and just a couple ND round filters to help with exposure when outdoors. This is a great, very minimal setup, and it only requires a single battery to power the whole thing. The next thing I love about this camera and where it really shines is customizability, if that's a word. Uh, this camera really lets you do anything you want with the settings, the layout, and how you use the camera. 
there's almost no end to the customizations you can make. Just a couple quick things I would recommend you check out is the joystick. You can change that to open up the menu system, and then you just use the joystick to jump in and navigate throughout the menus, very similar to a Canon cinema camera style setup. Another thing I did on my camera was change the rear dial to control ISO. That way I can still view my waveform and my zebras when changing exposure, uh, and it's just a lot easier to work with. Another thing I would recommend you try is to program one of your buttons to turn on or activate X Tele. This will give you a really clean crop in the center of the sensor, allowing you to add an additional crop or zoom on any lens that you're using. I am constantly turning this on and off, and I love being able to do that without going into the menus. If you're going to be shooting log, I'd also recommend setting one of the buttons to open up your LUTs or turn on a LUT. I use this also almost every single day and throughout the day to turn on and off my standard Rec. 709 LUT when using log footage. It lets me see the log and then switch back to a LUT for better exposure and being able to see my focus. And finally, the My Menu function is amazing. So you can essentially take every single video related setting on this camera, put it into your My Menu, and even program it to be the first thing that pops up when you go into the menu system. This way you're not navigating through the entire monstrous menu and you're able to get everything on a single menu that pops up every time you open up the menus. There are several other great features that I don't have time to go into like stop motion, time lapse functionality, scopes and exposure features, and much more. But we need to move on to the three reasons you might want to avoid the GH5. The first reason is sensor size. This honestly is the biggest pill to swallow with this and any Panasonic or Micro Four Thirds camera. While lens options are plentiful and it's easy to adapt to, you just won't get the same shallow depth of field on a Micro Four Thirds camera when comparing it to larger sensors out there. So keep in mind, if you like to shoot at f1.4 on a full frame camera, you will be sorely disappointed with the GH5's image when it comes to that shallow depth of field. Sure, there are workarounds like using faster lenses and speed boosters, but it really just will never get you close to that full frame look. Another sensor consideration is light sensitivity. While low light performance is much better on the GH5 compared to previous models, it won't compete with Sony or Canon's larger sensors uh, offerings comparable to the GH5. More on this in a second though. The second reason you might want to avoid the GH5 is shooting style. More specifically, autofocus. While better than other Panasonic cameras, the GH5's autofocus system just will not hold up against Sony's phase detect or Canon's dual pixel autofocus. So if you're a shooter or a vlogger who relies heavily on solid autofocus, this camera probably isn't for you. Personally, this isn't a deal breaker for me, but I know autofocus is the hill many modern shooters are willing to die on. And finally, you saw this one coming. The third reason you might want to avoid the GH5 is the GH5S. Officially announced, the GH5S is going to be a real nice low light companion to the GH5. So even though we're working with a smaller sensor, you will be able to achieve much better results in low light and that is something to consider if you've been looking at this system and uh, we'll cover this in future videos coming up and the differences between the two in which you might want to consider. At the end of the day there are two big reasons I love my GH5. The first is image quality. Many of you immediately noticed and commented on the quality difference in my b-roll footage in other videos and that is due to the GH5's robust image quality and log. This is the first camera I've owned where I feel log really makes a lot of sense. Previous GH models and budget Sony S-Log cameras just didn't have the image chops to back up a strong log workflow. But the GH5 delivers hard and strong with a combination of log profiles, color depth, and dynamic range. The second big reason to love this camera is education. Sounds weird, but let me explain. The dawn of HDR is here, and the GH5 is currently the most ready camera for this huge shift in content creation and consumption. With this camera, I've learned so much more about imaging than any other camera I've previously owned, and I still have tons to learn. But I feel like I've got a head start on HDR content creation and the future of how we process and consume video. There is so much more to great video than resolution and sensor size. And if you want to start taking your footage to the next level, I think the GH5 might be the right camera to help you do that.
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button for more content here on the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.